Hello and welcome to the back nine of the 2024 Played Against Sports Jonesboro Open presented by Westside Dis. It's the final nine. I'm Erica Stinchcomb. I'm Madison Walker. We're your two hockeys and it is Championship Sunday. Championship honk. Honk. It uh, is something out it's there. A, Kristen a, Tatar just absolutely running away with it. Sprinting. Tight race, though, for second place. That's true. Evelina able to overtake Holland uh, with a two-stroke swing on the last hole. If you didn't watch last time, last or the front nine, I don't know what you're doing. Go watch that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kristen leading the way, has the hot round. We got a handful of ladies at three down, two down. A lot more scores even or over par today due to the high winds we're experiencing. Holland Hanley hasn't quite been able to find some birdies yet. Emily Beach playing solid, clean golf, but also not quite able to stack some green on her scorecard. Evelina, though, having a really great day on the green and off the tee. Hole 10's a par 5 old hole 18, 818 feet. You see most ladies go down the gap and try to get past that first bridge. Second shot, this is the left gap. You can also take the middle or the right. Ideally, your third shot is something in the realm of a 200 to 250 foot approach shot to the screen. Left and right side OB that gets tighter as you approach the pin. The T shot's the real challenge of this hole. You do see um, some just hyzers around the right side. It was a right to left win. So the gap shot was a little tough today. We have seen Evelina annihilate this thing. Uh, and it looks like she's doing it again. It's so difficult to hit the gap on the right angle and not hyzer out out of bounds left. And Evelina does such a great job of hitting the gap at the absolute perfect angle where the disc hasn't started to fade yet. So impressive. She did the same thing yesterday with the TL3 today. She did champion Thunderbird. Kristen opts for a little bit of a safer play, just getting a forehand through the gap, making sure it finishes right. And she's plenty far for the birdie. Mm -hmm. This is in trouble. Emily kicks down. That is casual water down there. Yeah, a great place to fill, or a great direction to filter, but not the greatest place. <laughs> yeah, well, if... if if she can go behind it, I think it might be flat. Look at the wind mess with Holland's disc on that one. Some ele elevatoring action. I thought you were going to say elevation. Elevations. <laughs> yeah, okay, so not great. I've been in there. Ooh, Ooh. No. Some balance issues, and she's playing with that out of bounds on the left hand side. Or is it, it starts after that. I, I think it starts after that, yeah. It starts pretty wide, then comes in narrow. Holland, so far, able to just go forehand. I love the left side play. Me too. It's a newfound love. <laughs> I used to go right side, but they really tightened it. We see a lot of players go middle, but I think that's just crazy. It's You're just bringing in more luck, mm -hmm. I think. And especially if you have the sidearm, this play we're seeing from Holland and Kristen is ideal. Oh man, Emily left with, this is pitch out territory. Oh, and she is not able to get out. Oh man, two pitch outs in a row. That's the worst. And she is not even gonna be able to get up and down from there. Wow, Evelina so far. I gotta give a shout out to Hannah Wynn who Got nearly this far as well with a heat off the tee. Always fun to watch someone just fillet this really long, narrow fairway. Evelina doesn't try to bite off too much on her approach. Now she'll just have a very simple up and down. Emily going to try to shoot through the middle gap, and she does so successfully. Not enough to get a putt, but... Pretty hard to get a putt with that one huge low-hanging branch. Kristen, third up to the green. She is going to be tangoing with that one branch that we all know and love. So dumb. It is dumb. <laughs> Holland throwing a simple little hyzer, and it spikes in nicely. I think she's just past the little dumb branch. Wow. Evelina's so close on her third. Easy birdie. And she likes it. 
this always played as one of the hardest, if not the hardest hole on the course this year, though. It's playing a lot easier for the FPO field. There were 11 birdies today. About a quarter of the field getting it, even in the windy conditions. Kristen, under the branch, on a knee, leaves it low. But that was for birdie. She's got uh, two handfuls of strokes she can give away and still win. Emily in low right side. Going to be a double bogey with that double pitch out. Colin, first birdie of the day, finally carded. There we go. Just over the halfway point. Monkey is off her back. Evelina just inside the bullseye for her birdie. Moves to three down, still two strokes ahead of Holland. Evelina now matching Kristen's four down, but still 11 strokes back. Old hole one, now hole double one, 385 <laughs> feet, slightly downhill. So reachable by most FPO competitors, but it's a very, I would say technical shot somehow, even though it is a wide open shot. I um, agree with you weirdly. With, yeah, with the elevation and with the places that the trees are. <laughs> yes. It's, it's difficult to, to, you can't just dumb it down to a hyzer necessarily. You do have to push a couple of different tree lines in order to get there with a simple shot like that. Add the win and you're definitely thinking here. Yeah, it was mostly like head right to left. Um, <laughs> Evelina bases it. Okay. Wow, she's looking, is she tiki Evelina looking relaxed mm -hmm. out there? Big smiles. Tiki's not quite right for Evelina. I'm going to no. think about it more. Sana. <laughs> she's like, <laughs> bounce hut. <laughs> <laughs> what? Like, it's like gleeful, you like know? Like a bounce house? Yeah. Like kids in a bounce house are so happy. They're having the time of their <laughs> lives. Oh, Holland, just a little, what? A little uh, low, but uh, she put so much spin on it that it somehow ramps off the ground and gets almost a circle too. Maybe like ball pit? Mm. Trampoline park to ball pit. We love that. <laughs> Evelina. <laughs> Kristen oh. trying to ride Whoa. that right side, but the wind Says no. Yeah, flips it over. She was in there yesterday, but much closer. It is way more difficult in that back corner. So one thing I wonder that's in the back of Kristen's mind that I hadn't really thought about, um, which I feel like is silly now, but she's right rated at 999 right now. And as much as a lot of professionals don't pay much attention to their ratings, um, she would be the first thousand rated female ever. So trying to log these those high rated rounds is probably important to her right now. Um, trying to get the first four digit rating on the FPO side. Sure. Yeah. I wonder if she does think about that at all. I bet. At least a little. That's quite a milestone. Yeah. All in really long look outside circle two for a birdie. Because at some point she's got to still keep having goals. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> she achieves so many goals. <laughs> yeah, you got to keep setting new ones. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Kristen's first round, I believe, was 1044. She shot the hot round. Second round was 1009. And every event this year, the winner has averaged over 1000 for the tournament, which is just crazy. Emily with a nice, really aggressive, spinny putt to save par. She shakes her head. But yeah. That was a good looking putt. It was. She smiles at the end of it. That was a great putt. <laughs> She's like, how do I make this one and not the other one? <laughs> Evelyn, or uh, excuse me, Kristen going to take the bogey there. Doesn't really hurt her too much. 
and Evelina. Tap in birdie. Yes, please. That's going to be a turkey. Evelina, the only person on the day to park the hole in one of only seven to get to circle one. Such a good shot. Solo hot round now. Five down through 11. That's good even on a calm day. She's got three strokes on Holland for that second place position. Hole 12, a par four, 605 feet. Uh, pretty much everyone gonna take this gap that the drone flew. Um, gonna be interesting to see what Emily does here, but the right hand, backhand, usually you just wanna throw a hyzer uh, that ends up past that candy cane stake that we passed. Uh, we've seen the lead card ladies get so far up this hill that it's just a chip shot. If you are kind of even with the candy cane, it can turn into a full, almost a drive, uh, and it can be difficult to match the angle of the hill and get under the low hanging branches, but we've seen the lead car ladies make some quick work of this. This typically plays as one of the easier holes of the day, gettable by everyone in the field, but also it's just one that you don't see a lot of people bogeying necessarily. Yeah. Yeah, as long as you get out of this first gap, it's pretty simple to at least par it. Evelina's out there nicely. It is good to land on the left side a little bit more than the right. Um, we'll see Evelina have just a slightly more open right-hand hyzer line than Holland will, which was also a good shot. What do you think? Like, turn just full turnover here? Whoa. Uh, yeah, I kind of was thinking she might opt for the right-handed shot. She's really good at right-handed backhand. Or I was wondering if she would take the left side fairway, mm -hmm. but it's really difficult to get a look over there. Whoa. You don't realize how much this shot caters to a right-handed player until you watch a lefty try yeah. to throw it. Kristen, really early and really high. This is where bogey can really quickly come into play. Once again, it doesn't really matter, but couple of mistakes in a row from Kristen. Probably hard when you're winning by that much to stay in it. Yeah, stay focused. Emily's second is going to fade off to the right side rough, and it's going to be really challenging to get up to the green from there. Kristen's third. This is quite a rip to get up there. Watch her just do it. She's got room. Got to get under that branch or just slightly over it. That's cool. She's putting. Yeah. Circle two, look to save par. Impressive shot there. Holland, this is what I was talking about. Just, just kind of a slightly smaller gap on the right. She has to deal with these branches a little bit more. And she squeaks right under him. There is, I forgot to mention, out of bounds, uh, just to the left. I think touching the circle's edge on the left side. Uh, it comes into play pretty quick. Holland came up short of it, but it's there. Evelina... Looking so solid out here, finding her way inside the circle with the birdie putt. Emily, oh man, just having a really rough time, unable to kind of scramble from the woods, having to pitch out multiple times. That looks like a, a run. I would have a hard time if I was her not being like, Curse this hole. <laughs> Shaking my fist Shakes at fist, it. Yeah. yeah, all the way up the fairway. <laughs> Dramatically. Holland, long look for birdie here. Leaves it short. Kristen for a par save, about 40 feet. Maybe back to back bogeys for Kristen. Evelina, a little bit early on the miss. Again, it's the first time she's had to have a putt in a few holes. Emily struggling to get this bogey, but she converts. Emily just dealing with that classic compounding error problem that is just so fun in disc golf. Just a really fun problem to solve. Everyone can agree. <laughs> it's very frustrating on an open course when you keep finding the rough as well. And you're like, how is the rough this rough when everything's so open? 
Why am I covered in poison ivy? <laughs> Evelina and Holland dropping in their pars. And Kristen taking the bogey as well. Only an eight stroke difference now. <laughs> Evelina is still hanging on to that three stroke differential. Maria Oliva looks like she's popping off. Didn't quite see the score, but she had the emoji. Mm -hmm. She is climbing up the leaderboard. Hole 13, the hardest 310 feet you'll cover. <laughs> seems, like a, <laughs> seems like a dummy proof hole, but the wind says otherwise. That out of bounds does come up close on the left hand side as well. If you don't give it enough room out to the wide right with the hyzer. Wind was, you, typically it's a head or right to left cross here. Yeah, it's a combo of those things. Rivalina is going to be worried about this one. Yeah, it needs to dig, and it does. It sure does. The longest 310 feet in all of Arkansas. It sure is. Holland opting for a lower, more linear route. I like that in the wind. Me too. Relying on the skip. She didn't quite get as much as she wanted, but... I think she's just inside the circle, though. Mm-hmm. Emily, probably thinking about those trees on the left just a little bit, it would be nice to be able to swing it a little wider. And I think... I don't want to say that's as good as you can do, but it's really difficult on a windy day like today to try to mess with the hyzer flip any more than Emily just did. Mm-hmm. Kristen, nice low and linear, and gets the ground play. Beautiful shot. Emily up first here, pretty deep into circle two. Hey. Nice. Sweet putt. Let's see it again. <laughs> With a little pose. We love it. Nice to see Emily get some green on the scorecard after a couple of interesting holes. And she's hit a couple of really nice putts today. Holland also outside the circle for her birdie. Yeah. Okay. Not one to be big putted. It is Tiki kinda... Holland. <laughs> Tiki Holland. <laughs> Has like a drink out of a coconut with one of the little umbrellas. Mm -hmm. That's what she's hydrating with off camera. Yep, she just put up her umbrella. <laughs> Evelina right on line this time, but not quite enough to get it all the way there. Holland going to bring in the race for second place to two strokes now with that big birdie putt. Yeah, Kristen not playing bad just seems a little unfocused, which um, I can't out. even imagine being in the position that <laughs> she's in. So we are not going to criticize anything she's doing. She's winning by a lot right now. Yeah, you now. check right out. You scan your coupons. <laughs> <laughs> you get those recyclable bags. <laughs> wow. Wow, Maria seven down through 17. Just showing off and flexing her Texas wind muscles. I think she moved up 10 spots, it looks like. Wind muscles. Hole 14 is a par five. Uh, used to be a par four. They moved us back quite a bit, 755 feet. You can go to the right of the tree here, or you can lay up to the left. If you're on the right, likely it's a backhand up to the... Um, landing area. Uh, if you go left side, it's usually a sidearm. It often takes three shots, though, to get set up correctly. You want to do it in two and then throw across the water on your third, leaving yourself a birdie look. Any shot from the short side of the water that doesn't land safe, no matter if it cross, goes to the first drop zone. If you mess up that drop zone, there is a secondary drop zone. Um, we've seen some huge drives, but no one really fully able to go across comfortably. We saw Holland go across in two yesterday, but the ground was kind of awkward and she had a little slip. She made it across, but was what, like 110 feet away or yeah. something like that for the Eagle bid? Yeah, but one of the first player, actually, I think the first player we've seen attempt to go across totally. on the second shot. Yeah, I would love the tee pad to be just a hair closer 
uh, and reward those big tee shots a little bit more so we see more eagle attempts. Emily just working her way through that tree. And Sick. that's fine. Give her one. <laughs> yeah, she's earned it. Evelina, it always looks to me like she's not trying to go so far, but then it is like an absolute smash. Yeah, it is. She is way left. She might be pinched again today. I don't th I think it'll be fine. Okay. I believe you. <laughs> Great. Glad we've built up all this trust over all these years. <laughs> I still generally disagree with everything you said. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> and I'm okay with that. And that's how we make it work. <laughs> uh, Kristen, not quite far enough to go across. She has. She's done this every day, though. Yeah. It's like is her high play. forehand play. And it works pretty well. It's it going to be sure awkward does. footing, though. It's hard to get good footing in that landing zone. There's not a whole lot of it. Emily able to just chip a backhand down. Thankfully, she scoots over the cool. micro bluff on that side. Sweet play. She's actually in a good spot, too. Look how far Evelina is. Look at it. Look how fine she is. She's so fine over there. She is. But not far enough to uh, go across. No. Um, she's going to be caught up in that tree. It's in bounds, but hitch up land. Holland has to go under these branches and scoots up to a great position. Evelina just having to pitch. This is a tough final approach shot. That's a very narrow gap, very late in the flight. And it looks like a headwind, yeah. Head kind of. Oh, wow. Oh, oh God, she's so, so good. good. She's so good. Just throws the disc so well. So much control. Yeah, this is kind of like a left to right ish wind, largely. Sidearm is a cool play here. I think wow. that is the play. So good. With this wind. And of course, Kristen executes it flawlessly. Emily, a little bit of an advantage here, but. One of the few times, and she is taking advantage. Really nice, right nice. outside the bullseye. It's interesting. I think there are a lot of great opportunities as a lefty, but also there's just as many it really, really balances, punishing. really punishing ones. It's like, but I feel usually like, it's kind of neutral, but this is like heavy one way and then also the other way. <laughs> I feel like there's no like right-handed heavily punished shots. You know, yeah, you can still work not. something. Mm-hmm. That was a nice shot from Holland. I'm not sure how far back she rolled. Off the micro bluff. Oh. Mm. Emily unable to convert the birdie there. Let's see if Holland can do it. Another framed up little putt. There we go. Holland finding some more green. I think I'm going to start a podcast called Musings from Under the Micro Bluff. If you'd like to join me. <laughs> Poetry. <laughs> yeah, you can be my first guest. Talk about various birds. Mm -hmm. Maybe that roost on, you know, various bluffs. Just like the par that Evelina just saved and the bird From Kristen to talk. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Ooh, man, the she really, anticipation she there. She really took her time. <laughs> <laughs> no. Really clean hole 14 from our lead card. Two birdies, two pars. That's great. That hole is always one of the most difficult holes, but played a lot easier Oh, still played pretty hard today. I was looking at the wrong hole. Ten birdies, though, mm -hmm. looks like. Maria in the clubhouse. Six down to finish. Hole 15, a right to left crosswind today to cover this 315 feet. Makes the island seem very small when the wind is blowing that hard. If you do not land safely on the island, there's a drop zone on the short side. It's about 110-ish feet. 70. 
70 feet. It looks like 110, but it's it 170. Looks, Isn't that wild? It's funny. People will jump putt from there just right, right into the water. Yeah. And you're like, what? <laughs> yeah, we did a range finder and someone said 170 and then someone else didn't believe them. re range find it. And it, sure enough. So this was a right to left wind. It's interesting to see Holland go backhand here when she has such a good sidearm. And just barely safe. Oof. It is interesting to see her go back in. Mm -hmm. I have questions. Do you have musings? <laughs> huh. Too much turn from Kristen here. That disc unable to come back in time. She'll have to proceed to the drop zone. She probably forgot her recyclable bags in the car. Has <laughs> yeah. to run out and grab them. You know, you know how that stressful. is. So stressful. Emily has the lefty advantage here, but that wind, you probably just, just pushing it. You just can't feel it at the tee pad at all, and it's really hard to know how much it's blowing. The answer is a lot. A lot. We know Evelina's pulled out something really overstable. Yeah, that white destroyer is what she threw on hole. Old hole 17, what is it now? Nine? It doesn't <laughs> matter. She's really good is with that, it. Is that the third time she's hit Based the basket? It? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Gosh, she's unbelievable. Let's see it again. I can watch her all day. <laughs> wow, look at these little wind bounces. That's so cool. Yeah, you could see the wind really not wanting to let it come back. Wow. That what thing's a, a beefcake. What a sick follow flight. Dang, Evelina's scorecard looking really clean. Just like she's nestling the koozie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she... Um, and it has looked really clean on the green today as well. A little yeah, bit she, more than yesterday. She missed what? She's missed two or three, mm -hmm. but hit some real testers and still looking confident. That's what's well. important. Yeah. It's how you look. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yes, it is. <laughs> and she looks great. She it's faking it till she makes it and she has made it. Ooh, this is a pretty looking shot from Emily here. Right to the bullseye. What? Okay, yeah, cool. Holland just shrugs that one off. <laughs> Sick birdie. That's a turkey for Holland. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow, okay. So uh, the battle for second, alive and well. I mean, Evelina is parked, but once Holland got that first birdie, she is stacking them up now. Kristen for a bogey here. <laughs> a little low, right? But it sticks. <laughs> Evelina patiently waiting her turn to get her birdie. And look at her back nine or last nine holes right now. So good. Kristen still seven strokes with three holes to play. Only one stroke though separating Evelina from Holland, who has gotten a few late birdies in the game here. Hole 16, a par four, new tee pad farther back, new out of bounds area to the left, forcing you to go to the right side of this tree, lengthening the hole. First drive, you wanna get as close to this tree as possible distance wise, but land a little bit to the right to try to open up the second shot. Uh, as we discussed thoroughly yesterday, it's really hard to get far enough to be able to throw the sidearm uh, approach into the green, which used to be the predominant play. Now you see a lot of ladies just trying to punch through with a backhand through those trees and that fence line. Um, there, yeah, there's OB all the way left. Is there any other? I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay. Maybe way deep of the basket, but it does not come into play. This looks great. Oh, and then as we've discussed, discussed previously, uh, it's a little bit of an uphill tee pad, um, kind of forces you to throw nose up over the hill. So it's kind of hard to get as much distance as you want here. Though Holland does a great job.
That's a good looking shot from Evelina too. Yeah, they're doing a great job not pushing that left side OB, although it is a little bit better to attack from over there. From the left side, like close to the tree? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's shorter, but I feel like that tree gets, gets in the way. I guess they throw far enough where it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, Kristen's sticking to the right side as well. Emily probably aiming more at the tree and then fading away from it. What do you think? Yeah. Too much at the tree. Ooh. That's... Oh, no, it's good. Uh-huh. Okay. Whoa. Yeah, optical illusions up these hills. Plus, just <laughs> suddenly thinking about how do you do this as a left-handed person? <laughs> <laughs> Brain bending. Yeah. Um, this is what I was talking about. Having to just punch through here, that's literally the best play, which is a little frustrating. Yeah, it almost always knocks you down right at circles two, circle two's... Um, the right edge of circle two? Yes, somewhere in circle two, at best, the edge of circle one. Evelina just chucking one at these trees. And pretty much exactly what Madison was just talking about, somewhere around 45 feet after hitting the trees. I wonder if Emily's going to try to work a little flex here. Oh, no. Heiser. Interesting. Too wide, though. Oh, no. She's going to have to take it all the way back yes. where she last crossed. Which was pretty early. Kristen doing the sidearm thing. This is actually one of the first times we've seen someone able to attack this way, which is the ideal play. And she's up there for birdie. Man, Emily only able to progress a tiny little bit and she gets caught on the last tree. She'll have to make a long putt for her bogey six save at circle's edge. This back nine is really showing us all the ways the course is a little bit hard for lefties. Yeah, yeah. We should probably think about that more often. I'm sure <laughs> they think so. Yeah. All the lefties watching right now are like, We really? hate you. Yeah, <laughs> duh. Uh, duh. <laughs> Holland, oh, I thought she had it. Oh, quads of steel. I was going to say, man, some hamstring strength there, too. <sighs> Emily, just inside the circle, comes up low. That's going to be a double. This plate is the second hardest hole of the day. Only three birdies. And Kristen Tatar... Is one of them. She keeps doing that. Getting the ones that no one else is getting. Little birdie sandwich there. Yeah. Checks out. Checks back in. Eliezer Midling and Maria Oliva also got that one. Mm -hmm. God, the thing is, is Kristen is still three down, which is so good in this wind. Mm -hmm. And it <laughs> just kind of like looks lackluster with the kind of avoidable bogey she's taken. <laughs> This what is a, what, what cruise, a different way to play the game. This is what cruise control looks like when you're winning. <laughs> yeah. Maybe she's learning how to put it on cruise control. But just breaking and then hitting the gas instead. <laughs> Emily, unfortunately, having a little bit spicier of a back nine than you would like to have. Evelina, six down, tied with Eliezra Middling and Maria Oliva, who have the hot rounds in the clubhouse at six down currently. Hole 17, this low ceiling is the kicker and really dictates what you can do the rest of the hole. Your first shot, you want to land somewhere around this stake or a little short of it. Left is fine because it really allows you to come into the green with a hyzer, but you want to come in soft because that OB is on the left side, inside the circle, and deep side inside the circle. So no ground play allowed. It's an elevated basket as well, so putting's tricky. Kristen getting through that last bit of the branch, and that's a fantastic shot. Anything near that candy cane stripe is solid.
pollen. Is she going under or is she going? Mm-hmm. It was kind of a right to leftish wind. So the hyzer play was not a bad idea today. That was gorgeous. Nice and low. Evelina low as well, looking for that big skip, and she gets it. That's going to work out great for the second shot. Has some solid tee shots here from our first three lead card ladies. Let's now begin to think about what this is like as a left-handed player. <laughs> <laughs> it's not too bad. I think as long as she doesn't fade towards that kind of secondary tree on the right, um, she'll be in good shape, and that's a really pretty little turnover shot. Her angle control is really impressive. It has to be since we don't design courses for lefties. <laughs> no, and look how close that out of bounds is on the right side if she does hyzer out. Yeah. It's very pretty. Yeah. Working that nice little turnover again. Yeah, it just doesn't quite allow her to attack uh, with as fast of a disc as aggressively. Holland. So far up here, do you think that's like, it's not even 350 from there probably, right? Maybe slightly less? I think that stake is 300 feet, I believe. Is that it? Okay. Yeah. Kristen gets to circle two. Evelina near that stake, which that sure sounds like a fact, a probable statistic at the very least <laughs> that it's 300 feet away. Evelina working wide right, trying to get the ground play to happen before it gets to the basket. Ooh. Oh, man. Ooh. Riding the line, but she is safe for right. a birdie. Ride or die, baby. Mm -hmm. Emily just going to lay up for a par there. Kristen for a nice fun birdie. I had fun. Did you? I did. That was extremely fun to watch. A nice soft bid right into the center of the chains for another birdie on her way to her win. Yeah, just a really chill four down. There we oh, that was that rude. looked great. That was rude. No, here yeah. we go, Nomez. <laughs> I was going to say that looked right on the pole. A little bit left side, but... I think it, it hit a, the pole. It did hit the pole. It's a good putt. On an elevated basket, that's about as good as you can ask for. Oh, and this is to tie it up, actually. Oh. Uh, bad time for a Nomez, huh? Yeah, Holland with the clutch putt as well. Okay, tie for second going into the last hole. And even though I don't love hole 18 as a finishing hole, it's exciting because it does, it is one of the more difficult holes and does create some separation with distance. It was um, kind of a tailwind too, so it was a good day to attack this one. I think for the field as a whole, not a great hole 18. Mm -hmm. For you know, a MPL. podium finish? Yeah. Like, sure. Yeah. These ladies can all get there. Hole 18, par 3, 345. OB on the right side that turns into a little kind of inlet that's all out of bounds. Um, if you land out of bounds, it's a mandatory drop zone. They did move the drop zone up a little bit, so it's more makeable, but it's still pretty far away. Somewhere like 80 to 100 feet. Um, we have seen quite a few birdies on here, but it can turn into a two or a four pretty quickly. Again, this looks, it does look like a tailwind, so pretty good wind to attack. Common mistake going for it is hitting those trees on the right or turning it over into the water on the right or sawing it off to the left. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, cool. All right. The low play skipping over and through all of the out of bounds. Yeah, I mean, she could six putt and still win. Mm-hmm. Again, I think she's chasing that thousand rating. Probably a little, maybe not nervy to go first, but 
It'd be nice to go <laughs> after. She see knows, what your competitor. I feel like she knows Evelina's going for yeah. it. Yeah. Holland looks like she has an Athena in hand here. Working the right side. Oh, that is about as far as you can work it. And she is across Whoa. by a lot. By a mile. Looks a little confused <laughs> as to why that happened. Yeah, when when the Jennifer Allen play here. Well, it did look like it stayed up longer than got a weird, she anticipated. Yeah, you know? got a wind swirl. A tailwind should be knocking that thing out of the sky. Kind of like this. Uh-huh. And it... Oh. Okay. Well, that's probably it, unless Evelina makes it from the drop zone then, because Holland can just lay up. Another very difficult hole for a left-handed player. Yeah, it looks like she is just going to lay up with a slow speed disc here. Oh, and it's fine. Yeah, she's in a good spot. Mm -hmm. It's nice. Evelina needs to make this to maintain the tie, but it... It's pretty dang hard to make that. You yeah, can't she, even call it a putt. She's going to have to settle for the podium. The low podium. Which still sounds great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not quite Emily Beach's day, but it was a tough conditions out there. Holland in a super strange spot and a weird error. Huh. I don't know why she didn't just like put it down there, you know? That's now there's pressure to make that putt mm -hmm. for solo second. Maybe she's just trying to make it dramatic for the crowd. <laughs> Kristen just gonna lay up and take her winning par tap in. Okay. All right, it's fine. She's a professional. She did it. Yeah, she is. Second place. Who am I to critique, you know? Yeah. Party Holland is she knows what she's doing. <laughs> <laughs> it was really great to watch Emily Beach on the lead card today. It was also really great to watch Holland dial it in after a bit of a rough start. We always love watching Evelina, but... The true story today is this dominant wire-to-wire -wire victory from Kristen Tatar. Congratulations, Kristen Tatar, 2024 Jonesboro Open champion. Ladies and gentlemen, the eighth annual Jonesboro Open, presented by Played Against Sports and West Side Disc champion, Kristen Tatar. <laughs> I've been feeling quite comfortable playing in the wind this season and I feel like off the tee I typically then have only like one shot so I know I just have to execute that. It was fun to play in the wind. <laughs> if it's not windy then I feel like I have a lot more options. On the putting green it was difficult because it was so gusty and inconsistent. Yeah I've been homesick uh, throughout the trip actually. <laughs> especially when I'm like struggling with some like stuff. I just have to remind myself that currently I'm, I'm here. I have to take advantage of what I can do here because I cannot be in two places at once. So yeah, I, I'm trying to handle it. Uh, I love this course, I've always loved it. And I, I do love the changes that have been made here. And last year I felt like I wasn't playing up to my potential. So coming back here now and actually winning, it means a lot to me. Congratulations again, Kristen Tatar, averaging 10.16 for the event. It's just so impressive. She maintained that six strokes or more the entire time we watched her. Yeah, through two windy rounds and one calm round, she showed us that she can handle both types of condition really well and rise to the top. Um, and a 10.16 average is just incredible. We, I think our next rate, ratings update, we could see her hit that thousand. I hope mark. so. Congrats to Maria Oliva, too. Six down, jumping up 10 places um, into fourth. And Eliezer Middling, uh, six down as well, jumping 14 places into a tie for fifth. 
really impressive in the oh. win today. That, that's, yeah. Those are two incredible rounds. Um, yeah, we that wraps up Jonesboro. Congrats again to Kristen Tatar. And we next week move on to the Music City. And come hang with us in Nashville, Tennessee, as we probably battle more wind and weather. <laughs> as and we do. more fatigue and difficulty speaking <laughs> yeah. and all the things that you guys love to watch. Smooth operators in the booth. I'm Madison Walker. I'm Erica Sinchcomb. We're the two hockeys. Honk.